Hello, today I'm showing you different ways I embroider planets. I'll start off at two times the normal speed so you can see what stitch I'm using. Then the video will speed up to save time. I'm starting off with this basic planet using the stem stitch and I'm using three strands of embroidery floss. Stem stitch is one of my favourites for outlining shapes. As you will see, it's quite good for circles. This planet is inspired by the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. I imagine this to be a blue gas giant planet, or it could be a water world. Did you know that there are planets that orbit other stars outside of our solar system? We call them exoplanets. Using telescopes like the Hubble and Kepler space telescopes, we've discovered four and a half thousand planets outside our solar system as of 2021, and of huge variety. There are five methods for detecting exoplanets, radial velocity, direct imaging, astrometry, gravitational microlensing, and transit photometry. The two main methods are the radial velocity method and transit method. Planets exert a gravitational pull on its star, causing the star to wobble a little. This wobbling causes the star's light to slightly change colour from the perspective of astronomers here on Earth. That's the radial velocity method. The bigger and closer a planet is to its star, the greater the star wobbles. So this method often finds gas giant planets, like Jupiter, orbiting close to their star. When a planet passes in front of its star, it blocks some of the star's light. So if you plotted the star's brightness over time, there will be a dip when the planet passes in front. This is how most exoplanets have been discovered so far. I've used stem stitch for the entirety of this planet, but for a smooth outline, backstitch, split stitch and whipped backstitch all work well too. For this cratered planet or moon, I'm using the chain stitch for the outline with three strands of grey embroidery thread. Chain stitch is another good stitch for outlines but more fiddly and time consuming, so I don't use it often. I think chain stitch looks best for outlines when using three strands of thread or less and it's been pulled tight. Here are some more facts about exoplanets. The first two exoplanets were discovered in 1992 around a pulsar, which is a type of neutron star that emits beams of radiation from its poles. These two planets were named Poltergeist and Bovator, and a third planet, now called Draga, was found in 1994 and is still one of the smallest planets we've found so far. It's only twice the size of the moon. The first exoplanet discovered orbiting a main sequence star was in 1995. It's called 51 Pegasi b and it's a gas giant, around half the mass of Jupiter, orbiting the star 51 Pegasi every four days. It's 50 light years away in the constellation of Pegasus. Planets are usually named after their parent star and given a letter. So for example, the star Kepler 37 has four planets. Kepler 37 B, C, D, and E, with B as the closest and E the furthest away. Some planets of particular interest have a proper name, like the planet in our own system. For example, 51 Pegasi B's proper name is Dimidium, which is Latin for half. An example of a multiplanetary system is 55 Cancri, whose planets were named after famous scientists. 55 Cancri B, C, D, E, and F are named Galileo, Brahe, Lippehe, Janssen, and Harriet, respectively. For these craters, I'm using the stem stitch again since I find it easier for such small circles. I'm also using only one strand of embroidery thread. The back stitch and whipped back stitch would also be good stitches for these craters. Now that I'm embroidering craters, let's talk about craters. What's a crater? A crater is an indentation 
formed from collisions with meteors and comets. As of 2021, over 100,000 craters have been identified on the Moon, but there are thousands, perhaps millions more, that haven't been seen yet. Most of these craters come from impacts during the early formation of our solar system 3.9 billion years ago, which was a more violent time since there was more debris left over from the formation of the Sun and the planet hadn't settled into their current orbit. The Earth would have received plenty of impacts too, but because Earth has weather and the movement of tectonic plates, those old craters have been erased. The Moon and Mercury don't have atmospheres or tectonics, hence why their craters remain. I mentioned meteors and comets earlier. What's the difference between an asteroid, meteor, and comet? An asteroid is made of rock and metal, too small to be a planet, and it orbits the sun. It becomes a meteor when it enters the Earth's atmosphere and burns up. A comet is made of ice, dust, and frozen gas rather than rock and usually comes from the outer solar system, where it's colder. When a comet travels closer to the sun, it warms up and the ices become gases which form the signature tail. For this planet, I'm using a kind of satin stitch, or better called the long and short stitch. I'm using four strands of embroidery thread, three purple and one white. The idea behind the white thread is to create the effect of clouds in the planet's atmosphere. I've decided to make this planet purple because it's quite likely there are purple planets out there. In fact, the Earth may have once been purple. The molecule retinol which gives a purple colour, is used by some present-day bacteria for photosynthesis and is a simpler molecule to chlorophyll. Therefore, it could predate chlorophyll or have evolved alongside it on Earth. It may be widespread in the universe. Perhaps purple is life's favourite colour. There are, and will be, planets in a multitude of colours. The exoplanet GJ504b, a gas giant four times more massive than Jupiter, is pink. Apparently this is because, and I quote, still glowing from the heat of its formation. I've linked the article in the description. Our solar system doesn't represent all the kinds of planet that can exist and are known about. While we have found many planets similar to the ones in our solar system, gas giants, ringed ones like Saturn, Neptune-like, small rocky worlds like our inner planet, we've also found plenty of planets unlike any of those. Exoplanets are broadly characterised into four groups gas giant, Neptunian, super-Earth, and terrestrial. Gas giants are some of the most common exoplanets we find. Many of them orbit closely to their stars, so we call them hot Jupiters. 51 Pegasi b is one such example. We've also found hot Neptunes. You may ask, isn't Neptune a gas giant? Neptune and Uranus are a different class of planet because they are mainly made of heavier elements like oxygen, nitrogen, sulphur and carbon, with layers of water and other volatile ices like methane and ammonia, whilst gas giants are mainly hydrogen and helium. Hence why Neptunian is a different category. Super-Earths are giant rocky planets, 
that up to 10 times more massive than Earth, but are much smaller than Neptune. Despite the name, super Earths are not Earth-like. They can be water worlds, completely covered in an ocean many kilometers deep, or a frozen snowball, or have a very thick atmosphere. Super Earths that are five times larger than Earth and are mainly composed of gas can be classified as mini Neptunes. Considering that there are an estimated one trillion planets in our galaxy, among billions of galaxies, you can use any colours you want, in any planet type you want, and somewhere out there, that planet probably exists. So don't limit yourself to making replicas of the ones in our system. Thank you.